Our next story comes from U.S. News and World Report. Arizona ban on eviction set to end as heat and infections store. Housing advocacy groups have joined lawmakers in lobbying Arizona's governor to extend his coronavirus-related moratorium on evictions. Housing advocacy groups in Arizona have joined lawmakers in lobbying Governor Doug Ducey to extend his coronavirus-related moratorium on evictions, which will expire next week and allow authorities to start removing hundreds of renters in a state that's a national hotspot for both infections and scorching summer weather. Well, the scorching summer weather happens every year. Uh, Not exactly news, but yes, it is worth pointing out, U.S. News, thank you, that Arizona is uh, at that part of the year that's more difficult for us than, than the rest compared to most parts of this country for whom it's the opposite, where winters are the challenge. And, uh, yeah, we had some 115-plus days in Phoenix recently. Here in, here in the mountains, we had a couple days that, uh, that, that just just almost, almost, but not quite hit 100 degrees. Not so bad. But Arizona, uh, let's say Phoenix, the city of Phoenix, is a city that would not exist without air conditioning. Being homeless in Phoenix during the summer is a certain kind of fresh hell that I would not wish upon anyone. As Megan Heading said, who is the executive director of Family Housing Resources in Tucson, among the groups advocating for the extension, it's so hot in Arizona, you cannot live outside if you lose your home. And of course, we're still in the middle of a pandemic. You know, so, you know, unique phenomena about Phoenix, or the Phoenix Valley area, uh, not all of Arizona, but, you know, Tucson and, and a lot of that part as well. And she says, you cannot live outside if you lose your home. Yeah, you can't. You, you really can't here. It's not, it's not, a, you just, it's, it's not like, I mean, you think about, can, can you just live, you know, in the streets in Maine in, in the middle of the winter? I mean, you can. But it's a whole other survival challenge. I mean, same thing here. Just to make it through regular 115 degree days, can you imagine getting evicted and then dealing with that with, say, a kid, kids if you're a single mom? I mean, and and then the pandemic, right? We're gonna try to take care of these people, put them into housing, into homeless shelters, emergency homeless shelters. I mean, hey, we're not playing sports the way we're not having you know big public uh, sporting events like we used to. Might as well just turn the stadiums into you know uh, homeless facilities, just like the you know for like like with the Superdome in New Orleans, you know, with with Katrina. Now, with oh man, I so much bad news today. So much pain. What? what this, you know, when I read stories like this, it, it, it's it's really hard to not imagine for these individuals, you know, what what this is like. States from Nevada to Virginia also have recently lifted or are about to end moratoriums on rent payments and foreclosures designed to get people through the pandemic and its economic fallout. Pennsylvania recently announced it will extend its moratorium until the end of August, while Watson will keep its ban on most public housing evictions until the end of the year. Arizona's 120-day order ending July 22nd was supposed to ensure people wouldn't lose their homes if they got COVID-19 or lost their jobs during pandemic restrictions. But advocates say it's too early to end the ban because most of the government money set aside to help pay rents and mortgages still hasn't been doled out. Meanwhile, virus cases in Arizona keep rising, 3,287 new infections, 97 more deaths reported Wednesday. Arizona leads the U.S. in new confirmed cases per capita over the past two weeks. Patrick Patak, a spokesman for Ducey, said Wednesday the governor is working with all parties on a policy to protect renters and keep them in their homes. Patak said an announcement is expected later this week. So what are they actually doing? Like, what, 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 when they say we're putting a moratorium on evictions, that sounds really nice, right? It sounds, 
hey, we're going to, it's like, we're, you know how some landlords are being really nice and just not requiring people to pay rent or letting them push it off instead of evicting them. That's, that's such a nice thing to do. Well, you know, the government is going to come in and force them now, those who don't want to, to do the nice thing. Now I'm, I'm still kind of floored by how effective the government was in imposing this forced unemployment crisis. Given that most businesses that have a retail point of sale uh, and, and a brick and mortar physical presence where they have to have, you know, approval of government to exist, zoning, licensing, all of that. You know, when the government comes into and, and says to a business owner, hey, we're shutting you down, you know, there's 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 no option, a very little option, at least for them to say, you know, uh, with all due respect, government, I disagree. This is my property. I'm going to do what I'm going to do with my property. And I'm not going to follow that order to shut down. We saw what happened, right? Businesses raided by SWAT teams, shut down with citations, business owners getting arrested, employees pulled out of stores. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's horrific. That's what it takes. And even then, there's a still there's still significant resistance to this, right? We have the flourishing of underground hair salons operating out of people's basements or, or living rooms. You know, a life finds a way, so to speak. Business finds a way. You can only shut it down so much. And so, with the with the eviction moratorium, right? They didn't call like they didn't call the business shutdowns employment moratoriums for non-essential workers, right? Because they they couldn't you know they, they couldn't put positive spin framing on it. Evictions moratorium. There's this bad thing. Evictions. Yeah, they're bad. We're going to stop them. We're going to have a moratorium. We're going to at least temporarily stop evictions. But what does that mean? Like, let's let's translate this this bureaucraties, this this propaganda speak of government. A moratorium on evictions means we're going to force property owners to let people squat in their property. Now, is it squatting out? You ran out of, of rent? Well, if I would have evicted you because you didn't pay your rent and I don't get to because of government and you're staying there against my will and I told you, like, I don't want you to be here because you can't pay rent. And if you can't pay rent, like, all my other stuff falls apart right now. And you think, well, hey, Adam, this is, why, why would you be so heartless? If you're, if you're a property owner and uh, you know, you, if, why would you kick someone out uh, if, if they can't pay rent? Well, because it's an acceleration of the demise of my ability to house anyone. If you sitting on my property, not paying rent is actually costing me money, right? As opposed to having no one there. Let's say that my, you know, I'm, I'm paying mortgages on this property, you know, and, and if, if I don't get rent, then I'm going to lose it entirely. It's going to get repossessed by the bank, and then you're going to get kicked out. And then we're both screwed. You know, maybe maybe you being there is costing me another hundred dollars a month in utilities. And if I don't get that, I can't pay the mortgage on this building. I'm going to lose it entirely. And then the bank is going to own it, and then they're going to kick you out, and then we're both homeless, right? But practically speaking. Where are they able to enforce this? Unlike with the employment crisis, there are more rental situations where the landlord can, can kind of get out of things, right? And I use the example of, uh, you know, under the table rent. And there are a lot of people in America who rent from individuals without government registration without a formal lease well you know i was never uh, according to the government if i was never renting to you in the first place they can't stop me from evicting you you've just been a squatter to begin with this is going to get ugly in a whole other way right it's not like a positive activity they can say you need government permission to do business 
You need government permission to live in a house. No, you need permission from the person who owns it. But as Donald Trump said about, you know, some restaurants may close but come back with new ownership. Well, same thing with a lot of housing properties here. Unless the Republican governor extends or otherwise modifies his eviction moratorium, court officers can force out people temporarily allowed to stop paying rent after falling ill with COVID-19 or losing their jobs because of the pandemic. It's unknown how many people facing eviction already moved out voluntarily. Well, as we brought you the story just a couple weeks ago, it was already 3 million college-aged Americans who had just decided to move back in with their parents. Family Housing Resources and more than a dozen other groups noted in a letter to Ducey last week that the Arizona Housing Department has a backlog of people trying to get rental assistance, about $4 million out of $5 million allocated in March to help people struggling because of the virus has still not been distributed. Some are still struggling to get their first unemployment checks. After July, those checks will lose the extra 600 in federal money provided each week to help during the pandemic, dropping the average weekly check to $240 or less. As Stacy Butler, director of the Innovation for Justice program at the University of Arizona said, we have to get more time so this doesn't become a catastrophe. It already is a catastrophe. The Maricopa County Board of Supervisors announced a more richly funded program, $30 million to help renders affected by the pandemic outside Phoenix and Mesa. The county's Human Services Department will administer the program funded with federal virus relief dollars and delivered through community programs. Now, this is one of those times where, where I have to go, wait a second, and they make the libertarians look heartless with this, right? Well, wait a second, why am I? I, I own my land out here. I was responsible. I paid for it outright. I, I, I'm financially responsible, so I don't have to pay rent. I'm not, I, you know, I've, I've, got my, I've got my act together here. Why, and and I, I pay taxes. Why am I paying taxes to subsidize someone else's housing who is irresponsible? What? Because that's how government works. Government subsidizes irresponsible behavior. Now, am I saying that these people should be evicted? Of course not. No, I mean, this, and I'm not just saying it because this never should have happened in the first place. No, I've got two backstop arguments for you on this one, all you anti-freedom, anti-libertarian trolls out there. No, look, not only should this crisis, as we know it as an economic crisis, not have happened in the first place, we should have not had a forced unemployment crisis that would have led to this anyway. But let's say there was a, a real effect of just the pandemic, that, uh, you know, just the pandemic led uh, to a significant number of people, you know, having to shut down their businesses for a little while or, uh, you know, not being able to go to work because they personally got the virus, right? But you'd have better insurance for that. And you go, well, Adam, that's that's just crazy. That's your, your utopian libertarian thing. Like, really? What do we have now? We have, a, we have a government insurance program and it's a really crappy one. I mean, this sucks. It really, really sucks. You pay too much. The people running are corrupt. They steal from the program. They waste money in the program because they're not held accountable for how it's spent. And it's delayed and ineffective in distribution to actually reach the people it's supposed to for that need. So you can look at it in the sense that, you know, well, the, the average working American is working for government half the year. You add up all the fees, fines, taxes, and, and hidden costs of government. Yeah, the average working American, you pay half of your income to the federal government or to the government as well, excuse me, not that's Fed, state, and local, all together, 50% of your income. If we didn't have this government system of insurance, let's say you're, or and all the other services rolled into it, your income doubled. You think you'd be able to afford some kind of insurance that would cover this? Oh, yeah. And it would pay out like that. Well, first of all, if it wasn't for government, a lot more people would, you know, own their homes rather than have the banks own them. Well, gee, why do banks own all of our homes, Adam? Well, government gives banks special powers. What do you think they're going to do with that? Why do you think we have gone so, so far from that American dream of owning your home? And they've, they've tricked you. They've tricked you into thinking that having a mortgage means that you own your home. When you pay property taxes, you pay rent to the bank. Like, no, no. So $30 million is going to this now through government. Whether you benefit or not as a taxpayer, you are paying for this. So 
more importantly, enforcement is already becoming a serious challenge. And Gregory of Gregory Real Estate Management sued Ducey this month, asking a court to allow the eviction of a family in a rental home in surprise over unpaid rent, which the firm says has now reached $8,000. The lawsuit says Ducey's executive order exceeds his authority and fails to compensate property owners for their losses. Renters are still legally required to eventually pay back everything they owe from the time they started withholding payments, with some people now three or four months behind. So th th there's no way, there's no way that this represents anything significant beyond kicking the can down the road. All of this rent's going to be piled up. There's and, and let's say it works in the sense that hey, we had a we had a four month moratorium on evictions, and where they're able to enforce this, and it's you know the official legally registered renters. It's you know in these cities where they're extending moratoriums. It's in you know big housing projects and, and apartment buildings. But for someone, let's say, let's say it works. You say you're, you're behind four months on rent. You say you're paying, you're paying, you know, two thousand dollars a month in rent. Let's say, 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 less, say it's a thousand dollars a month in rent. You're paying a thousand dollars a month in rent, and for four months you're out of work. <clears throat> Expenses are still there. You burn through all your savings. You come out of this. They end the moratorium. They end, and this is this is kind of a best case scenario, right? They end all the lockdowns, all the shutdowns. You're able to go back to work and get and make as much money as you were making before. <clears throat> now, what are the odds of that, right? Odds are you're going to be making a lot less. So, again, for the sake of argument, you're making as much money as before. But now you've got four months back rent to catch up on. Let's say your landlord's really cool and says, all right, we're going to let you space that $4,000 out over, over 12 months. All right, so it's a year. you got a year to catch up. $333 a month. Now you are slapped with that extra bill that you didn't have before. Most Americans can't afford an emergency $400 cash payment if they needed to cover uh, something, a medical bill or a vehicle repair. We've seen the stats on this. It's the majority of Americans are living that strap, paycheck to paycheck, hand to mouth. And if your rent basically goes up, just 20, uh, 33%, right? From $1,000 to $1,333 a month. How many Americans can afford that on the same income? Not a lot. You're going to see a lot of downsizing. And this is really what the super class in this situation is okay with, right? Let's push everybody down. Right? Let's just oppress everybody. Let's make things more difficult. Oh, well, not everybody, not the rich and powerful, not not those of us who have the nice jobs, but for, for you know, service industry folks, for people who work uh, you know, manual labor jobs, we're gonna push them down. They're gonna be their income is gonna be reduced, they're not eliminated, their dependence on government is gonna go way up. And they're probably going to have to go down and downsize into smaller homes. There's a whole other real estate crunch that is coming from the unfolding of these eviction moratoriums that is completely unavoidable. So the moratorium on rent or the moratorium on evictions Is this a good thing? I'm I'm glad that there's something happening to to alleviate this immediate suffering. But it's kind of like a heroin addict going through withdrawals. I'm, like, I'm, I'm just going to take this next shot. It's just going to relieve the pain for a little bit. But you know what? If if we keep turning to government. It's only going to get worse, and eventually we're going to die of an overdose. I don't think that's what's going to happen here. I'm still a little more optimistic than that, but a lot of Americans are going to be homeless, and a lot of them are going to die as a result of this. And I don't just mean 
the suicide epidemic caused by the shutdowns and the lockdowns, but with the homeless crisis and all of the economic contractions that are coming, and by contractions, I mean, yes, it is going to contract power and wealth into the hands of the few. The rich will get richer, the poor will get poorer. And if you weren't ready for this, if you didn't already own your home, own your property, have that independence, you're going to be setting yourself up to suffer a lot more than those of us who are ready for this. I hate to say I told you so again, and it's not so much that, but let this be the last warning. And by the last warning, I mean, that let this be not the last warning that you hear. You will hear more. Let this be the last one that you need to hear before you start paying attention and making the appropriate lifestyle changes to ensure that you are not as vulnerable as so many Americans. Right